took us into this logo. So can you explain what it is to our audience? The logo is a quote that we say to start and end every Grey Havens meeting. Um, and it, it's basically saying that you're okay to be who you are whenever. Yay. Does anybody else have anything you want to say about this logo? And it's called the logo, and the reason why is a secret that only we know. Ooh. Okay. So, hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So as you know, we're recording this for Longmont Public Media. So I just want to say that we are Grey Havens YA, Grey Havens Young Adult. And these are some of our participants and um, so, uh, graduate too, and some upcoming graduates who have been doing philosophy with us, some for a short time and some for as long as six years. But these are young people who come together every Saturday to talk about the big ideas of philosophy. But we're also a bunch of geeks and nerds, and that's really important to us. So today, uh, we've been asked to really be part of recorded history and talk about our experiences of um, what is going on right now. So the, first, the question I want to start with is, what has life been like for you, and how has it changed since you first heard of coronavirus or COVID-19? For me personally, it actually hasn't been that different. Like this is what my spring break would have been anyway, yeah. staying inside and not going anywhere because I'm part of a middle-class family that can easily go and get groceries and that would probably be, would be able to afford any medical care if necessary. So. That's a really good point that it's different for people um, who have different, who live in different socio, uh, different socioeconomic levels who are more or less privileged. Louise, it looks like you wanted to say something. Um, it's been kind of hard because I'm an extroverted person and it's been hard to not be able to like see all my friends because I love to hang out with them. And like, I've only been able to be with my family and I love them, but I, I really want to see my friends too. Yeah. Can I speak? Yes, yeah. of course. Okay. Yes. So like, um, I have like the opposite uh, thing with Lu than Louise. Like I'm an introvert. So I'm kind of just like going on my day to day life is just like a weekend every day. And it's kind of interesting because I can just like uh, read books, watch movies, paint, and like I don't have to talk to people. I get both of those actually <laughs> really well. I relate to the introvert thing. Um, what about everybody else? For me, I've had a few events canceled that have been really like really exciting parts of my life that now I don't get to participate in. Um, robotics was probably the biggest one, but also oh, wow. a college visit. <gasps> so that sort of stuff has been really, really tough emotionally. Oh, oh my gosh, I can imagine. Wow, has anybody else had that? I know Peter, this is your senior well, year. Yeah, like, um, and the thing with the senior year, you know, like at this point, we don't even really know what's canceled. Like if graduation will happen, who knows, that sort of thing. Also, like for me specifically, um, like I'm turning 18 soon and I'm working on finishing my Eagle Scout and, you know, everything closed. So I, I had to go through the whole process of getting an extension for that because like I can't exactly do like my project or anything right now. So it's just um. everything's being although you should replan everything to still make it work in time. You know, I want to say that all these things are really big and they all have emotional weight to them. But I also want to say that it's okay to complain about little things and it's okay to complain, period, because we're all adjusting and like something that might be really big to me, like the Plato, the Philosophy Learning and Teaching Organization conference was canceled and I was very excited to go to that and that I was asked to facilitate a, a lunch for people who are new to philosophy for children and communities. Um, so that's really big for me, but like for somebody else, they might be like, oh, it's just another conference. Like, what, why do you care about that? So I think everything is, we're all having different responses. What do you think? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So any other thoughts just on how life feels different now? I know that I had to, um, I had to, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do my silver ward project because it was supposed to be on the April 8th start. So um, it's, it's like very difficult to replan everything when you already had it like planned out. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think all of these plans changing are, it's huge. And Courtney just asked if she could go next. So thank you, Louise. <laughs> Um, this has been really hard for me because I've had to move back out of my dorm early and that was oh, yeah. a really stressful event. Like my roommate, she's from out of state, so she had to move home early and we had a lot of stuff planned that we're not going to be able to do now. So that's kind of hard and it's just been like all of my classes being moved online. It's like a college workload that was okay in person is now twice as hard online because I'm taking five classes in a lab online. So it's really been an overwhelming experience. Wow. Oh. It seems like they should take it easier on you because it's already overwhelming. And then uh, Clara had something to say to you. Yeah, um, for me, something I found really difficult and I'm sure a lot of people have is that suddenly all of these things I've been looking forward to are canceled and that's been, like put me in distress, I guess. Um, and then I'm not able to see the people I would normally turn to to look for mm -hmm. emotional support. And that's been really difficult. That sounds really difficult. Yeah. Has anybody else found that? Like, have you found like that you're losing your support system? Personally, most of, like a lot of my friends have apps like Discord where we can mm -hmm. message each other and call, but it's it's really not the same as being able to give someone a hug. Yeah. How do you think this is gonna? Oh, sorry, Sawyer. I feel like actually, that's kind of like the opposite for me, sort of, because, uh, for some reason, I'd say the majority of my friends live in Washington right now, and I get to actually talk to them like almost every day now that they can't go anywhere and I can't go anywhere, so it's pretty epic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are silver linings. Hey, Mina, join. I'm gonna get my earbuds. So, Mina, we're just, hi. <laughs> hi, I couldn't get on. I had little, like, technical issues. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad you're here. We're talking about how life has changed um, since we first heard about COVID-19 and what it's like for you. And I, I really want to um, underscore what Sawyer said about there being some silver linings. Like, we've been doing, we had an online philosophy discussion last night, and it was so fun, and some people were in their PJs, and... I had on pajama pants, but nobody could tell. And like, there were people who we've never met before from like different places, and and that was nice. But um, Deacon, Deacon says, Deacon, do you want to say it out loud? <laughs> oh yeah, can, I, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, good. But yeah, I've been I've been you know, not really since I don't have to go anywhere or do a whole lot. Like I don't have to actually go into school, and my school hasn't started yet. Uh, it's given me a lot of time to do things that I don't normally get to do, and so that's been nice. Are you working on the second draft of your novel? Uh, kind of. Yeah, I've also been working on like five other things, so I kind of <laughs> need to get back on track with that. That's awesome, and Malia, you said you've been getting a lot of writing done too. Yeah, that's literally all I've been doing with my time. I'm on a call with the girl I'm writing um, a story with, like, like five hours a day, like, just, like, writing and talking. That's wonderful. Do you feel like there are things that you are able to do and skills you're able to develop, to develop and things you're able to learn that you wouldn't if you were in – I mean, I know it's spring break, but let's imagine that this keeps going. And um, do you feel like – and I know some of you are looking at doing classes on Google Hangouts that we're doing right now and Zoom and other platforms. Yeah. But let's just say you, like school is not going to take up as much as your time of your time. Do you feel like you would actually be able there are ways in which you would be able to learn things that you couldn't learn in school or that it would be an advantage to you to have less time in school? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would say, um, for, for me specifically, 
I, I'm a senior. It's the second quarter of my last semester in high school. It's like I've almost learned everything I'm going to learn in high school. <laughs> but at this point, it's like just get it done, and then it's it's. it's there's so many other things I would rather spend all day doing. Like some of it's actually educational, some of it is just not being in school. Um, and it, I could be using that time to be more productive and actually like do things that aren't sitting in a classroom and learning the same couple of things multiple times. And I don't want to ask the question to bias people against the traditional schooling because I'm going to ask the opposite in a minute. Um, like, what do you miss about school? But my question right now is, what makes something educational? Tamina, you've got a little background noise going on, so what, um, yeah. if you could, like, you can mute yourself when there's background noise, but then we want to hear from you, too, of course, and I'm glad you're here. Yeah, like, just my throat has And we're traveling around your house, it's kind of fun. What? I'm sorry. My throat just hurt, so I was getting something to help my oh, throat kind of calm down. I'm sorry. And that's totally okay. I'm glad you're here, and it's fun. I'm still trying to figure out the you. I'm trying to like figure out the kinks. Still, I'm trying to figure out how this all works. Yeah, you know what? We should have had a practice session, but when we, when we if we do some Zoom meetings, we'll do a practice session, um, so that we can all play with it. And with Zoom, if your computer allows you, if you, um, I have to get get a I have to bring the green screen, um, into my home office if I want to do it, but you can have like really fun backgrounds like Hogwarts and space and Max Headroom is one that I saw that's really cool. But okay, so what makes something educational? Like Peter, you were saying like there's some things that are just not being in school and some things that are actually educational. And I just want to like, I, it sounds like an obvious question, but I think it's not. I think like um, educational things are, like uh, something that's gonna help you either like do better in like your own school or like uh, go beyond or just like advance like what you are already doing in school, I guess. So it's something that's going to help you in school and like has like a practical, does that sound right? Yeah. Like a practical application? Yeah, yeah. but like yeah. also like any kind of learning, I guess, cause you could like, um be like reading i mean like you could like be reading about like some sort of like science that's not part of like your curriculum at school but it's still educational because you're still learning when you're learning and it, yeah i i i mean if that's learn it, it sounds like such an obvious question like the answer would be well something that you that teaches you where you learn but it it strikes me that there's more to it to than that and you added more actually after when you were speaking. I'm not saying that you gave a simplistic answer at all, but Louise has more to say. I was gonna say that um, when like to make something that's educational, it is when you're learning, but also it's it it's when you're enjoying it because if you're learning something that you absolutely hate and you just don't want to be there like sometimes you just can't absorb it because it's just not like meant for you yeah yeah and deacon had a really good question wait do you want me to go yes i do oh, i was just curious as to like what's the difference between say like learning something and like being ed like educated because i mean i know that they're very similar but like on one hand, like you could be researching something that, you know, maybe will be useful like for like a career or something like that. Or but on the other hand, you could just be like looking up just some random facts and things like that. And are they both equally as important? Are, is one of them learning and one of them really being educated? Like what's the difference between those two scenarios? That's a great question. I think that's a good point because when you think about it, if you think of someone that's educated, you're thinking of like, college professors and that sort of thing. I, like a plumber has a like complex field that they know a lot more about than the college professor. So are they equally educated or do they know more on a separate topic? And Audrey has something to add. Yeah, do you want me to read it out loud? Yeah, sure. Oh, hold on, I forgot like what I typed. You could like be, um, 
reading like some pointless Wikipedia article, but like if it doesn't help you in life, it's not like going to get you anywhere, then it's not really educational. Mm. So, and Deacon was saying um, the plumbers are highly intelligent and efficient beings. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and like, if you're uh, like researching, it could be like to one person, it could be like random facts. But to you, if you're like interested in, in a, a career based on, let's say, like the psychological impacts of World War II, then yeah, that, that would be educational for you, at least. Okay. That's different for everyone. Yeah. Other thoughts? Um, I think that being educated is when someone is like explaining something, where learning is more on the listener's part. Oh, like, say more. So like... A teacher educates their students, but the students don't have technically could not be learning. They could just be twiddling their thumbs in the chairs, or they could, or you could be online do looking up random stuff and learning, but not like being educated by the site. Like they, you just like learning stuff by actually doing it. I guess so education is guided learning well education is guidance that could be learning and learning is yeah. actually understanding yeah i think that's a good Anybody way of can hear me. oh i'm sorry my screen froze so i didn't hear the last part of what you said i'm sorry you don't have to repeat it it's okay because i think it's still recorded uh, uh amalia i see your question but i just want to say one i want to clarify a little bit from what Xander and Miriam were saying. So is it like learning I'm getting from you? Learning is like a personal action. Like you have to do it yourself. Mm. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I wouldn't say you, you have to, I mean, you have to actually be paying attention and listening to kind of learn, learn, or you can be learning how to, I don't know, like muscle memory kind of stuff as well. But, you know, you kind of have to be do, working for it as well. There's a little bit of responsibility on the part of the learner. Like it's not all yeah. decided. Yeah. 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 Like there's a lot of people that are um, like they don't do well in school because they don't try. So they're not learning anything and they can't really uh, get that far through school. Actually, I know a little something different because some people have trouble just sitting still and learning. Like they can't get really catch it if they're just sitting there. Like me, if I'm not moving around, I can't really listen very well because I'm a synthetic learner. And also, yeah, I, I get like different learning types uh, too. I was just like talking about like uh, people who voluntarily don't listen. Mm -hmm. And then Malia, you had something? It was more just a clarifying question on what Miriam was saying. Oh, go ahead. It was just like, um, things like random wikipedia pages right going back to that is it only educational if it's beneficial to you to you and can it still be um educational even if it doesn't really like help you later on i think that's a great question what do you all think i think that, I think that, that kind of goes to um a lot of people always say how in school you learn a whole bunch of things you'll never use again like i know the quadratic equation um but it, it's like, I would still say learning it is educational, but people learn a lot of things that will never be used again. It will be generally considered educational. Like if you get a whole degree in like history or something, you learn a lot of things where if you don't end up being a professor, are absolutely useless in your daily life. Clara? Um, I feel like Learning anything at all is probably like like factual stuff, like not being indoctrinated. I, I don't know how to explain it, but like learning anything is going to help you in the future because just by learning or like strengthening your mind, I think, and like teaching yourself how to learn. So I feel like all learning could be considered education if you're looking at it from that perspective. I think that's a great point and that I mean what we do is teaching people how to think just by thinking together and then I think Miriam and then Mina yes. is that right? 
one of the other things that teachers at my school will say when kids ask, why do we have to learn this, is because they're also learning how to follow through on a task that they don't necessarily want to do, because that's something mm -hmm. that you have to do a lot in life, and learning how to make the best of the situation, even if you know it's beneficial and you don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And that's almost, that's sort of like social emotional learning. And then, was it Mina? Were yes. Okay. So what I was thinking was like, a lot of my a lot of the kids at my classes ask why they have to learn this, and what I've learned from my mom, she's also been a teacher for a while. What I've learned is because it's helping us learn how to be functional in society, so that we can figure out like on a daily basis how much money we have, so we can go to the store and buy ourselves what we need, things like that. Yes, and then Malia. It, in some ways, it's like learning how to learn something. When teachers tell us, like, oh, it's just going to help you later on or something, they won't exactly give us a direct explanation of why we're learning something, but it's also, like, they're teaching us how to learn something so we can learn anything, pretty much, that we, like, want to. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it, Robin, it sounds like you had something that you wanted to throw in there. Um, well, sometimes I just are participating in the chat, but I was just saying, yeah, it's like the whole like, critical thinking um, like what we do here is teach you more about how to think um, because even just maybe philosophy doesn't seem useful um, in like your everyday life but we've learned that it is because you're teaching how to think more critically think bigger so that's all I wanted to say <laughs> yeah and we're always talking about the four C's I know Peter and Deacon you went to the facilitator training so you've heard this <laughs> um, being and you've all heard it actually. So being critical, giving good reasons for what you think and being willing to have your thinking challenged, being creative. So thinking of new possibilities, combining ideas in different ways, all those things that you're awesome at. Um, being caring, so caring enough to hear what somebody says and make sure that everybody's getting to speak and they're having a good experience and caring enough to challenge their thinking when it needs to be challenged but do it in a sensitive way and collaborative, which is just like, you know, we think better when we think together. I, ha, has anybody had the experience of like figuring something out? I'm going to feel, I, this is, I probably set myself up with this question, but like thinking of, thinking of things in a new way or th something that you might not have thought of if you were thinking by yourself when you're thinking with other people. Please don't say no. <laughs> I mean, it definitely happened with me in some of my college classes where, like, you get a group of people together and you don't really know what you're doing, but everybody brings a different idea together that ties everything together and allows you to think about things in a way you hadn't considered before. So, like, especially, like, when you're learning another language or something, just having an outside perspective can help you grasp a concept easier than others. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say sticking together is almost what we do at most Greyhaven meetings because none of the stuff we talk about any one individual would come up with by themselves just sitting uh, at the firehouse just like talking to themselves. But when we're all together, if someone's idea will build on someone else's, which will then build on someone else's. So I, I, I really think just like the discussions we normally have are basically joint thinking. I feel bad. I feel like I asked for a plug or a testimony. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Deacon, did you have something? Oh, no. I was just typing in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're so good at multitasking, um, I, young people. I know Courtney really. has your homework up. Oh, Mina. Yeah. I actually had another question that kind of ties to this is a lot of kids – say that they really think that this one teacher is bad when it's really because they don't get the material and I wondered why do we think that if we don't get the material automatically the teacher is bad mm. what do you think do I you think it's, it's not it's not okay. necessarily that the sorry um, <laughs> it's not necessarily that the teacher is bad it's like um just like their their style of teaching is not like what's best for you personally. It might work for others and it might work for the majority of people, but it might not just work for you. 
Yeah. So it's kind of up to you to, like, um, take that next step and, like, figure out how can I um, make sure that I'm learning what I need to learn. Yeah. So is it always up to you, though? And um, I know Deacon had something and then Miriam. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, it really, when it comes to, like, talking about whether or not a teacher is necessarily bad, I feel like there's a lot of different variables that go into that because I feel like a, a bad teacher is more a teacher who isn't willing to I guess learn a little bit from their students I mean because I have had like some teachers that were I mean I wasn't too interested in their material but I would say that they were bad teachers like they taught the material the best they could I just wasn't interested in it or I couldn't really work with it and there are other teachers who would not change up material that was like antiquated or not really working with the students just because it was the old way of doing it and they didn't really want to put in the effort to change that. And I feel like that would be more of a bad teacher than just a t- teacher who I don't understand the material for. That's what I think. Yeah. Miriam? Yeah. So um, this year, our calculus teacher went on maternity leave and we had a long term sub. And the difference between kids shifting blame from being able to un- not learn content to an actually bad teacher is when you can tell that the whole class or like significant portions of the class are suffering because significant portions most of the calculus class had no idea what was going on wow yeah i think that's a good measurement i agree I think with it's- i agree with uh, that because um i've had like um, a lot of classes where, like, uh, kids are, like, saying, oh, I don't like the teacher, or I don't ever get what's going on, and then there's me who has no problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, and these are all really good points, and I like the way they're building on each other. Um, also, I would really like one of those brownies. I wish you could pass it to me through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so good. So I think it was Xander, and then was it uh, Louise. Louise, okay. Okay, so, so, so it, if you have a teacher that actively makes you dislike the subject, then that's kind of when you know that they're, like, a really bad teacher. Whereas in a teacher that doesn't, like, excite you on the concept is not a good teacher. Whereas a teacher that is, like, makes you actively exciting is really ready to like knows all the subjects and is ready to, you know, teach you about that because he's excited to teach you about that kind of stuff. Then that's kind of like a good teacher yeah. in general. Yeah. And Louise? Um, so I was going to say that sometimes there are just those classes where you might be like, oh, I don't like the teacher, even if they're a good teacher. Um, that it might not be something that like you can work with. But sometimes teachers just um, aren't like are bad teachers because they. I've had a te- I have a teacher right now um, who doesn't care about what the students think. Really, she only she just like shushes us and teaches the way she wants to teach. So it can be like really hard if the teacher isn't really trying to um, care for what the students actually think, and that's kind of what makes a teacher. A- Teacher. It sounds like a lot of you are saying that a, what makes a teacher a, an actual a teacher. I like that. That's what makes a teacher a teacher, like somebody who actually teaches, is that they're responsive to you. And I was I, just building on something that Audrey said. What do you do when the whole class is struggling? It, it's not just like making sure that you're meeting the needs of the kids who are falling behind or the class as a whole, but like even the kids who like are, are the students, the young adults who are, are getting it and they're bored or um, it's, what do you think? And I know we have lots of other things to talk about, but like, what do you think um, school should be like? And do you think that this experience of having to adapt to social distancing is going to change school or any other part of your life, really? Quite frankly, what I feel is that a lot of kids at my school hug and, like, headbutt each other, quite frankly, a lot. And after social distancing, 
some people are going to be like way too cautious maybe mm. like and sometimes like especially this is kind of hard on me because I'm a very social person and so when I go back to school we're still a bit panicked about what's happening so I'm like a little problem with getting back to the light yeah um, yeah so I see uh, Oh, um, so Peter, Deacon, and then you. Can I? Oh, sorry. Oh, was it directly on that? Um, no, you, you can okay. wait. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> so, Peter? Okay, um, just the point I want to say, it's it's how often school or it can it'll be designed for the average student. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it will issues with the topic of time. And a student who gets it instantly or um, figure it or just get it and then be bored for the rest of the time. But I think it's just an important balancing act of like you don't want to segregate the kids because you have a whole bunch of people who think they're super smart and a whole bunch of people who think they're dumb because they're in certain classes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a balancing act of making sure everyone has the material without making anyone like about segregating people basically. Yeah. Yeah, Deacon. I, I agree with Peter's concept. I remember that when I was in middle school, not necessarily in high school, but this is more of a thing in middle school back when I was in like a traditional schooling environment. Uh, there was definitely a lot of separation between students who were let's say in the upper levels of the class and students who were not in the upper levels of the class. I remember that certain kids would get really kind of smarmy about the fact that they were like, oh, we're in a higher math level than you are. And they tell that made them like, oh, they're going to go cure cancer. And I'm like, they're not going to cure cancer. They know how to do math better than I do. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, sure, they're good then, but it doesn't mean that they're somehow a superior person to someone who maybe isn't as good as math, but is good at something else. And I feel like the school environment should be more supportive for all types of learners. It should be less focused on, on, okay, let's just boost these kinds of kids and leave the other kids in the dust. You know, as somebody who's been an adult for a long time <laughs> um, and out of school for a while, I can I can really say that like it's not necessarily a predictor. Like Just because you're good at math doesn't mean that you're going to do this wonderful things in life. There's so much more to being a person. So I think it was Audrey and then Bella and then I forgot. Courtney. Courtney. Oh, okay. Audrey, Bella, Courtney, Nina. Yay. <laughs> okay, so like I think that with like the social distancing, distancing and like everybody um, like doing school from home, it's like, uh, I think it's going to be a lot harder for kids to mess around in class. So there is like a possibility that like some of them might do better. Mm. But at the same time, you also have like that lack of connection. Um, like between like face to face between like teacher and student between like students and other students. So it's uh, for like others, it might be harder. Yeah, there's pros and cons, it sounds like, and depending on who you are. Yeah. Okay, um, Bella? Oh, did, Audrey, did you get to finish? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bella? I almost kind of disagree because a lot of what's happening is school is moving to online learning so that we can keep up with our classes and still get the content. Um, Online learning, but, I know for me personally, it doesn't work as well. And for a lot of others, it doesn't work. And as a senior, um, keeping up motivation during the second semester has already been hard, like getting to classes on time, especially keeping up with work. That's all going to get a lot harder because there's no actual physical like requirements. So even though they're having the online classes at the same time, it's a lot easier for me to just sleep in and not show up and do the work sometime later. And I want to point out that you are saying this as one of the most motivated human beings I have ever met. <laughs> so this is you saying this, and that's significant. Yeah. OK, I'm totally losing track of who's next. Was it Courtney and then Nina? Yeah, Courtney and then Courtney. OK. 
Sorry, I don't care. I don't know. You guys pick. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to go off of Bella. Um, I actually agree with Bella because, like, having to not physically go to class was something that, like, I was motivated more going to class physically because, like, my professors would take attendance and stuff, so and they would be in class work. Whereas now that it's online, all of my professors have been super like, we don't know what's going on. We're just going to make everything do on like Sunday night. So just do it at your own pace. And while that's nice for some classes, it's harder for others because it I can't find the motivation to like be bothered to do something at that moment when I could go do something else. So it's been harder for me like coming back home and doing stuff than staying at school to get stuff done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Nina? Actually, I disagree with especially because mainly I feel that doing it at my own pace works better because at school if I don't do it at my own pace like I, I'm able to do it at my own pace which is nice but when I was in elementary school it was kind of more stricter on like deadlines because like a lot of my teachers had the deadlines and like put they're at elementary school that didn't so I was at my own pace and so I freaked out got way more about big projects or little things from other projects. Yeah. This is so interesting to me. And I just love all your insights. Um, um, Malia? Yes. Oh, Deacon, we, we can hear you typing. <laughs> Malia, what, what did you have to add? Um, I was just thinking, like, with all of the like when to do work and when to get assignments in and what to do with all the free time. I think it's really helping everyone with time management, time management skills. And if you are generally a um, like procrastinator, like if you always like put things off and stuff, I think it's really helping like you realize like, oh, look, I do not normally, I don't have very good time management skills. I need to work on those, you know, that's like something I struggle with. Oh, me too. <laughs> so we can give you insight. And then, um, Deacon, I want to hear what you've been typing. Oh, I was just <laughs> saying that uh, hearing a lot of people talk and having been in a school environment for about maybe three years where the pace has definitely been very student set, like there's been a lot of like keep going at your own pace. I feel like the problem is more that there's a lot of college professors, teachers that are not used to giving people work at their own pace and they're used to having their own set lines. Just saying like what Courtney was it's like, oh, well, we're just going to make everything on Sunday and do it when you can. And that's not really a good system because there has to be some sort of deadline system in place even if the students can do it at their own pace it shouldn't just be like okay just do everything and we'll look at it at a certain point just because they're not used to doing it with this amount this kind of degraded structure i'm sorry I... no i think that's great and i like the term like degraded structure because it sounds like what a lot of you are talking about is how well you function with structure um, or, or with less, with more or less structure. So I think it was Courtney and then Audrey. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I would definitely agree with Deacon. I mean, I had like a set schedule when I was at school, but that immediately got disrupted when things got shifted around. So I think it's not more of like a time management issue or trying to mm -hmm. figure out when to do things. It's just that my schedule that I had been using is just thrown out a window pretty much. And I have to make a new schedule to try and like get stuff done. And I think that's the hardest part is trying to find a new schedule while everybody else is also trying to make a schedule for things. So everything's like up in the air right now. Yeah. Yes, Audrey. Um, I think like there's a lot of people who um are probably not going to do quite as well with online schooling because of that dead because of those like uh, lack of like uh, set deadlines. But at the same time, there's going to be some people who it will work better for them. For example, I know like um there's like uh somebody who went like homeschooled like last year, I think I can't remember who, but it was like somebody at my school and she like finished um like um the same course that like we were in like months earlier. Wow. In the year. Because it was self more self paced. But at the same time it won't work for everybody. I mean I just keep hearing that over and over again. I think that's a really important point. Like it 
the same thing doesn't work for everybody. I have another question that I'd like to ask, but I want to make sure. Oh, Bella, did you have something? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I just want to make sure um, um, if anybody has anything else to add. It looks like Deacon, did you have something? Oh, no, I'm going to type in the chat. Like I'm right back. Hey, I would like to ask. Oh, Peter? No, no, it's nothing. <laughs> I was making a joke about how Deacon just got out. I missed you all so much. I am so glad we're here. What happened? Yeah, Nothing, Deacon. Nothing. We're just laughing. <laughs> we're just laughing. Yeah, Peter made a joke about you running out, but it's okay. Wait, what did he say? <laughs> I don't know, Peter. What did you say? <laughs> well, we never know. <laughs> Peter and Deacon, I just want to point out for people who are watching this, are very, very good friends. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no malice here. Um, but the the question I want to ask is a two-part question. One is, um, is school the most important thing right now or in life? And also, what what do you think that is what do you think is society's responsibility right now to people your age? I kind of feel that school. Oh. Uh, Mina and then Peter okay. and then Miriam. So I kind of feel like it's in the middle because like for one, my sister's school, mm -hmm. they said she ha she can do the work, but she doesn't exactly have to if she feels that like, like my sister's school said that it's more important to feel safe and mentally prepared for second grade than it is to do the work. Whether my school is telling us we have to do it just at our own pace. So it's kind of straight down the middle, depending on how the school feels or how the school district thinks of the importance. And how do you feel though? You said it's in the middle of your priorities. Yeah, Cause I feel that the education is very important because then I can be more prepared for seventh grade. But at the same time, I feel it's also important to feel safe and comfortable and just have mm. some rest time. I agree. Yeah, that's I, I, I can just say that's my experience. It was Peter, Miriam, Louise, Audrey. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, my point was just you were saying society's responsibility to young people, teenagers right now. And I think, you know, school, you should at least probably stay on top of it. Might not be as in-depth as usual because there's other concerns um, to worry about. And I think one of the big things for adults is to basically just set a good example for young people right now. Because, like, if, if one of your parents was to go out to a party or whatever, they're not showing you to, like, think about other people. They're just saying, they're, they're representing to just do what you want to do. Where for young people, it's important to see that when there is a crisis like this, they need to think about other people. Yeah, that is something I that is something I think might be a silver lining too is that people are learning more of that kind of, of how important other people are. So it was Peter Miriam. Mm -hmm. I've already forgotten. Okay. Yeah, so I think one of the responsibilities that society has right now is to make sure that the systems we have in place don't collapse. That things like the school system don't get too off track because students aren't being a aren't able to learn as rapidly or as in depth as they can. That's very good. Yeah. So Louise Audrey Zander. I think I got it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so it's really important that like everybody gets the education they need, but school isn't the most important thing in life. It, it's important, it's very important to be educated, but it's also really important to be able to do the things that you enjoy and to be able to progress on things outside of school um, that don't have to do with education. What are some of those things? Um, like if you play an instrument, being able to practice your instrument, audition for 
groups outside of school if you are like a really good artist and you want to practice your art and um like put, put it in shows things like that and those things aren't educational or i, I think those well, things are not, educational educational but i meant like school and like uh, i get it i get it okay and standard no, right? you, Audrey, you miss me. Audrey, I'm sorry. Audrey, I feel like I just keep skipping over you and interrupting you. So you have the floor. Okay. Um, so I think, like, the most important thing right now is um, taking care of, like, your own mental and emotional well-being. Because this is a pandemic. Everybody is stressed. Everybody is, like, unsure of what's going to happen next and everybody's socially isolated we're not seeing people that we're used to seeing every single day um if we feel lonely there's not really um a good fix for that right now so i think like finding new ways to take care of yourself and your own uh, mental being is what's really important right now that's very well said yeah and xander well just want to say that that's free, so we might want to uh, start wrapping this up. Oh, um, oh goodness! What time is it? Uh, three. Three. Oh. So we have we actually have like another um hour, <laughs> but we're gonna oh, keep oh, that the <laughs> Go step four. That's okay. Thank you, though, Brooks. <laughs> um, but I did ask you to help me watch this. I have this on full screen. So how about if we talk for, you know, at least another 30 minutes because I have so many more questions and then we can do fandom moments and we'll have somebody explain. And do you remember that any noise you're making, we can all hear and it makes you <laughs> pop up on the screen. So if there's background noise, be sure to mute yourselves. I had somebody come in. I had my partner come in and say goodbye to me because he's, Actually, he's a pastor, so he's going to his church, and he's the only person there. I feel like I have to explain everything that I do and, and during this time. Like, oh, I'm going to the office to pick up the green screen, but it's there's nobody at the office. <laughs> or there's a lot of stuff I have to pick up at the office. But so uh, other thought, um, um, oh, Nina, uh, I think you mute yourself by if you just want to. This would yeah, be a little mic button. I want you to move the mouse. Move your cursor to the bottom of the screen. Where do you push the this is something that is so relevant to what's going on. It's like I've had to learn Zoom. Now I get to learn Discord so I can uh, we can chat with all of you. And um, we'll see Audrey in a minute. And um, it's been a big learning curve. So any um, other thoughts on society's responsibility to young people right now? And let's turn it around and say your responsibility to society. I mean, to stay inside, but. Yeah, kind of like, then that's huge. I think especially because we are younger, we are like at the peak of our immune systems. We are less likely to show symptoms of the disease if we have it. Um, and a lot more likely to recover if we do get it. So, like, especially as the younger generation, we can't be going out and interacting with people because we are most likely to spread this and put other people in danger. Yeah. Does anybody have um, thoughts on how your generation and millennials or just younger people in general are being characterized during this? Like, how you're being portrayed? Um, can I say it's something? okay, Nina? Don't worry. Don't worry. Yes. Um, I think that like the younger generation is being portrayed as like, um, like not really taking things seriously. Which like there are some people um, that are not taking like everything seriously. I know that for sure. But like that's across like all generations. It's not just young people. It's like people in every generation that are like not taking it seriously. But I also know that a lot of young people, like what I, from what I've seen on like social media, everybody's like um, trying to take care of each other and like spread positivity. That's 
That's nice. I like that. So I think it was Courtney, Miriam, then Mina. And then can I ask, does anybody, um, I can just clarify the question a little bit. Like if you're hearing things on the news about how Gen Z or millennials are um, being responsible or not being responsible, how they're handling social, social distancing, um, just like, any way that anything that you're hearing that is specifically targeted or um, for which your generation is like the target, um, what people are saying about you, basically. So maybe not even in the media, like just what people are saying about young people. So it was Courtney, Miriam, Mina, right? I mean, I know that like uh, several of my friends at university until the in place, like stay in place order went out, they were still going out and partying, which wasn't a very smart move on their part. But then I know most of my friends are also staying inside and finding new ways to connect. So I think it's really just a matter of trying to get everybody on the same page as soon as possible. I don't think we should really be scapegoating anybody or calling somebody the bad guy, but there are definitely some people who aren't probably taking this as seriously as they should be. And I think that's one of the possible problems of why this could be going on for as long as it will be going on. That's a good point. Yeah. And then was it Louise and then I just went, I just saw it on the screen. And Miriam. Yeah. So one of the things that I've noticed about Gen Z in general is that they don't tend to take everything seriously because if they took everything seriously, they would be under incredible stress all the time. Like we're on a planet with an expiration date and few people are doing things about it. If we took every crisis super seriously, we would all be terribly stressed and sad all the time. So we can't take things seriously, which I think is not the best coping mechanism, but better than panicking every time something happens. I think that is an excellent point. And I want to hear from the next person. And then I would love to hear what other people think about that, including Audrey. So was it Mina next? Yes, I believe so. Okay. So <laughs> I'm usually what, better at this. <laughs> actually, where I live, where I live right now is like, some people are taking it a little too seriously. Like, there's just one guy who's going around pretending to be a police officer and telling <sighs> people to go back to their house and all them back. Wow. Which, and also, people in other countries are taking this way too seriously because, like, they'll be going to the grocery and, like, they'll the police will come and start shooting them with rubber bullets. That's happening currently in, I believe, India. No, that's Africa. It's happening in Africa. It's happening in um, uh, India and Bangladesh as well. Yeah. India and Bangladesh. Okay. Um, yeah, I yeah, was, I was um, just talking to somebody from Bangladesh about it, like, yesterday. Wow. Like, they were doing, so like, protests or something. Um, what? Just talking about, um, so, I don't know that much about the situation, but there were, like, protests and stuff happening for, like, certain things, and they were getting shot with, like, rubber bullets or, like, being out. Okay, so if I remember the story, it was like, um, people got ran like ran over by some like person driving a bus or whatever. So then like a ton of people in school like started doing a protest, but then since they were all like grouped together, the police started shooting them with rubber bullets because like coronavirus risk, and it was just like a really big deal. Wow. So it sounds uh, that would be an interesting thing to talk about is like what you think would be the ideal government to deal with a crisis like this. Um, but who was next? I believe, um, so after me, Louis. Louise, Louise. Louise. okay. Yes, yeah. Louise. So I know that um, young people, if they get like coronavirus, they're probably not going to die from it. It's probably just gonna be like a cold to them. So um, I know a lot of adults have been saying, oh, young people, like, stay inside and stuff, but you don't have to worry. But it can still be really worrisome for some of us because we don't want to spread it to, like, our family. And we're just mm. really worried about, like, what's happening in the society. So young people should be allowed to worry just as much as like, adults. I like that, allowed to worry. And I, I want to say um, there's, it's not that there's no risk 
to young people. It's that there's less risk. But yeah. what do you think about that that phrase, allowed to work? Well, um, everyone should be allowed to worry about the things that they think are like not good and they should be able to worry for whatever they want to worry about as long as it's not going like overboard crazy worrying. Yeah, that's well said. Um, so is Peter and then Bella? Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, I, I just had a thought about um, kind of the different worry between different ages of people. And when you're a young person, especially like high school and college, there are constantly things going on that won't happen again, like graduation, mm. that sort of thing. Yeah, as you get older, if, if something's canceled, those things are often like, like they, they happen again. Like if you miss if a wedding or something has to be canceled when you're like 50 or whatever, the wedding can happen another time. But a lot of things young people do are one-time things, graduation and prom or something. Yeah, like my conference, there's going to be another conference next year. That's a really good point. And then I just forgot the order again, me. so help me. Okay, so Bella. My one of those Peter's. Um, we, Bella went next now. Um, we should not only be allowed to worry, but we should be allowed to be sad and like grieve over the events that we're not going to be able to go to. And yeah. also a lot of us seniors are moving out of state this year. Um, and so another part is this is the last time we get to really hang out with our friends in high school uh, before we're off like doing our own adventures. So this whole thing is impacting just every part of life. And even though we're not probably not going to die from this and we still have many years ahead of us that won't be impacted by stuff like pandemics, it's still important to recognize that we are allowed to be emotional in every way. Yeah, yes. And who is next? Any other thoughts on this? And, and then what about what Miriam said? So I, I really feel what you're saying about the grief over things that this is your only chance, your only prom, your only graduation, um, your last chance to hang out with your friends before life changes for you. And I'm sure that like, even if you're not a senior, there are other things that are once in a lifetime things. And you know, you're always told to cherish your youth. Um, but I'm, I'm also interested in what Miriam said about the more global picture, um, which is this idea that there's so much for your generation to worry about that it's hard to take everything seriously because you would not be able to function. Mina, you had something? Yeah, so actually, there's this like really cool show called Cirque du Soleil, and sadly, just yesterday, they declared bankruptcy. Oh, man. So that's a big event that's been canceled as well. There's, like, like one of my mom's friends wow. is, like, my mom also was going to go see this new play that just came out. She's not going to go to that. There's a lot of other huge events that might be canceled, but at the same time, those things can also, like you can do them they can try and redo it or something like that maybe try and reschedule and if they can't then the person who has it can hold like their own little mini version of that whether like businesses can go bankrupt and they all lose their money and they can't really exactly come back yeah yeah um, and it, yeah and i think it was courtney next yes so yeah so i mean while this this whole thing is obviously making history but i think another thing that we need to consider is what we're losing as well i mean i know that a holocaust survivor died in the middle east and that's a big part of history that we're losing that we can't get back that first person account of those events that it's forever now lost because of this event that's happening yeah and deacon made a point about humor deacon 
What were you saying about using humor? Oh, no, I was just saying that we were talking about on Miriam's point earlier that we can't really worry about everything. And I was just saying that I agree with that. that I have a personal experience just with that because of how my brain works, even like very small problems, like problems that people would be able to brush off quite easily. Like to me, like I'm a much deal than they should be because my brain like makes it to be a bigger deal than they really have any right to be. Because of that, I feel like I need to use like humor and I can't really take everything too seriously because if I did take everything seriously, then I would not be able to function. I relate to that so much. And I also want to say just that I know this could be true about you because like your writing is deeply hilarious, but it's also like deep. It's actual, it's actually deep. So I, I like it's to up to it's to the level of satire where like it's funny, but it also says something, and I think that's that's a really important function of humor. And who is next? I was wondering, like, I believe after Courtney, um, actually Audrey made a pretty good point with what she said because she said that people are buying groceries in a bulk, especially toilet paper, which I've learned is kind of strange why people don't like people buy a lot of food but they also buy like three packs of ro toilet paper and so a lot of what a lot of people are asking is why is the toilet paper such a big sale currently during this pandemic yeah does anybody have theories oh um, um Audrey, do you have more i was just like um well, like, my point was there was kind of just, like, about um, kind of, like, the psychology behind, like, everything that's happening, all, like, the panic buyings. It's, like, um, you hear that, like, mass, like, people act irrationally when they're afraid of things. It's, like, a common theme you see throughout movies. But, like, you don't really think that it's real. You think that you're um, going to be smarter than that. But then uh, when you're actually afraid, you find yourself in the grocery store. Buy, bulk buying toilet paper. <laughs> I think you made such a good point, and I want to hear from Miriam and Xander, and I want to just throw out a question based on what Audrey said, which is, you're a generation that has grown up on dystopian um, books and movies, <laughs> and how does that change how you are experiencing things? But it was Miriam then Xander, right? Yeah, I believe so. So okay. one of the things that's unique about this pandemic that we haven't seen before in history is the fact that we have the internet, so we can communicate with everyone, and we can also easily access information about what's going on. So it's, we're panicking, some people are, and some people are doing just fine, and it's interesting to see the difference. How would we do without the internet? Yeah, so Xander, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the chat, but Xander. Right, I think that is a good point with the internet, but I'm going to go back to the theory crafting in, about the toilet paper. The reason why I think the people are buying so much toilet paper is because they heard on the news or other sources that people are buying toilet paper, and if they mm. don't buy toilet paper now, they're going to run out of toilet paper. <laughs> And they don't know how long this is going to last, so, yeah. So, yes, so I think it was a little, it was a little um, and that's a really good point, like how the media is handling this and where you're getting your information. So, Louise, then Bella, is that right? Well, I know um, so many people have been going to buy toilet paper that some, like, some targets um, ha there are, like, police guarding the toilet paper aisles. Um, so it's, it's becoming, like, a very big thing, and it's also a hand sanitizer because people, like, feel that they need to always have something to keep their hands clean, and because so many, it, it's gone in most stores, people are selling it for, like, a lot of money over eBay and things like that, so sorts of things. Um, the necessities that we but want, but don't ex like need that that much. Um, um, it's going like very, it's going very crazy because of this whole pandemic. Yeah, and 
Um, was it Xander next or is it Xander? <laughs> I don't know. Who was me. next? Um, oh, Bella, that's right. Bella. I wanted to sort of talk about like the way we read and watch dystopias in literature and movies. It's always from the perspective of the hero or the chosen one, someone who is special and sort of resolves the whole thing on their own or with a team. And in reality, we're not typically the people making huge changes. Like, we're not going out and making vaccines. We're not going to be able to sort of save the world in the way a typical dystopia um, is saved or not saved, depending. So I think it's just, it, it's sort of hopeless how we can get, we can, we can feel hopeless just because the way things are portrayed and the way things actually happen kind of don't line up. Mm. Yeah, how are you all feeling about, about all this? Quite frankly, I don't, I'm not really bothered by it because I know what to do and I'm trying to stay calm through the situation as much as I can but at the same time there's a lot of stressful things going around and sometimes people go overboard talking about the worst instead of the best that could happen which makes people get stressed out and that's why so many people are panicking I'm sorry Audrey just said, just said something funny in the chat but I think I that's a really good point did somebody else have something? Oh. So, <laughs> so um, Courtney just pointed out that it's 325. So I think, um, is anybody interested in talking about this more? Or do you want to do a more traditional YA meeting um, next week? And also, Robin and I are available as, like, if you ever want to talk or you just need to connect to a human, then we're here. Um, did, so, in terms of, like, do you want to go back to doing another story, or um, Robin's saying it, that she thinks that what makes people anxious is the uncertainty, and I agree with that. So, anyway. Um, oh, Xander, yes. Okay. So, and what then, thing? Courtney, I mean, yeah. Okay. Wait, it's Courtney first or me? No, Courtney was just saying something in the chat. Oh, okay. So... One thing I want to mention is since I live in like a little, a small little family, so we're not really that separated. And that means we kind of, I'm kind of hanging out with my brother and my mom and my dad more in person. So I don't really get that same missing physical people, I guess. Because I'm kind of with my, my like family, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to that, and that makes me think of what um, you said a lot earlier, Clara. Is that in some cases your support system might be it might even be a family member, but it might be a family member who doesn't live with you or friends that you really need. And Bella, you had more that you wanted to say. Yeah, so I'm sort of in a different situation. It's just me and my mom at my house right now, and even though I have siblings and aunts and uncles, they're all sort of spread out. So I'm not able to, like, visit my family that often. So most of my support system is my friends. And I've definite, definitely been feeling the loneliness that comes from not having other people around. Yeah. Loneliness is such, like, it, that's a word that ha we haven't actually said yet. But I think that's a huge part of this. So it's a word that um, we associate with pandemics. Yeah. Is loneliness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's definitely happening. And um, Deacon, did you did you have something that you wanted to say? Yeah, I'm just saying that I, even though I haven't really been impacted a lot physically, I feel like I've been impacted a lot mentally by this. And I, we talked about this when we did the Facebook Live meet. But like, what everything that's going on now, like less with the sickness more about how people are reacting, is, is that everyone either you know panicking and buying toilet paper or being really cynical and being like, oh, look out, like, the coronavirus, like, we're all gonna get killed. And it's, like, it makes me interact with people even less than I already did, to the point where, like, after this, I probably will not socialize as many people, because I'm like, wow, people are either crazy or they're jerks, so, like, what's the point? Yeah, 
Um, so yeah, I feel I like have, this is giving me less confidence in people, not because of the virus, but because there's how people are acting today. Because everyone's either being very cynical or being very yeah, sensible both. at the same time. And I, I want to address that a little bit, um, but I want to hear Peter what you have to say, and then we do have to kind of wrap up. We do have to wrap up. Yeah, my point was just, like, I'm a senior, so I got the whole life ahead of me. And there's a lot of thinking about the future going on. It's just a big thing. Will everything go back to normal after this? Or will everything be different? And, like, how will that impact my future and everyone else's future? Like, we don't know how long it will last. Like, it's affecting the economy and everything. And there's just so many things we will not be able to know about how the coronavirus will affect everything. That is my big anxiety because I just don't know how this is going to change everything after we're all allowed to go back out or we're all, I mean, nobody's forcing us to stay in our homes, but um, after this is, it seems like this is all over. <laughs> you know, after so we, we're not uh, expected to social distance anymore. I just yeah. I don't know how the world is going to change, and um, I I do want to say on on Deacon's point that I'd like to have some more discussions and um, maybe even like do some workshops on like where like how the media is portraying things because I I just I'm I'm really feeling personally like not sure about all the information that I'm getting and. Um, you know, you go to the grocery store and it might seem crazy, but then somebody's really kind and it's, it's really hard to know. We were talking earlier about how your generation is being portrayed. And I think, um, you know, that it's, it's not fair to characterize like all people or small groups of people, uh, based on small groups of people. Um, so I don't know. Um, I would like to go into fandom moments, um, and I would like, to, yay! And I would, which is a good thing. It's a good thing in life. I would like for somebody to explain what fandom moments are, and if you have hey, guess ideas, what? Deacon World. Yeah. It's, it's, sorry, yes, it's Deacon a tradition. Must. You have to say Deacon Will. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. Even when Deacon was gone, has <laughs> never in the chat. Even when Deacon was gone, we had to call him up and say, Deacon, <laughs> you're going to do That's fandom that. moments. <laughs> so in your fandom moment, if you have thoughts on um, what you want the next discussion like, like to be like, like if it would be nice to have some normalcy and just read a story and talk about it um, or watch some clips and talk about it, um, then that would be something that would be really good. And if you want to talk more about what's going on and um, Robin, what you're saying in the chat, yes, absolutely. So, um, who's gonna take us in and... <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I really missed you all. I really missed you. So who is going to explain what fandom moments are? Somebody. Peter Will. Deacon Will. Yep. Oh, Peter. Peter Will. Yes, Peter, Peter Will. Will. Peter Will. Okay. I guess. So, fat the moment. You know, interesting things have happened to you this week. Uh, I guess we can all just say we've been at home. Um, but just interesting, nerdy things that happen, or just other things that happen. You know, we're not very strict about what exactly constitutes the fat the moment. That's true. Okay, do you want to start? And then I think Robin's going to call on people. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, I can start. Um, and I don't got much. I've been reading, uh, playing video games. I've been playing a board game online with my friends that I'm kind of hoarding. Um, yeah, that's about it. Not very exciting. It, it sounds like fun to me, though. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's not school. <laughs> um, I'm just going to run down the list. So the next person would be Audrey. Okay. Um, so I uh, finished the Lord of the Rings series. Um, yeah, the books and the movies. I had to like 
Um, for like the last two movies, I had to like look up all the extended version scenes on YouTube because I didn't feel like paying twenty bucks for a movie. <laughs> and we have um, to talk. yeah, so I was stuck in Middle Earth for, for quite a while. Um, now I'm reading. Um, I got like two like uh, volumes of the complete Sherlock Holmes, so now I'm reading that. Nice. It's pretty cool. Um, I started um, a TV show, like, Star Trek Discovery. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't actually watched any Star Trek movies. I'm just watching the TV show. <laughs> actually, I've, I've watched one Star Trek movie, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna, like, move to, like, a different room. Because, like, I um, did, like... Um, I'm like finger painting because I was oh. like bored. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna like see if I can like turn around the camera. I don't know if I can, so I'll just like do it like this. You see it? Wow! 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 wow. Show me again. Oh yeah. Oh wow, Audrey, that's wonderful. Whoa there! Thank you. That was finger painting. You're a genius. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And then well, like being. we got like some cool like uh, puzzles. Like there's like all the puzzles. All the pieces are kind of weirdly shaped. Oh, bean. Nice. So, yeah, those are my Venom moments. Bean. That's nice. Very cool. Yay. Uh, next would be Clara. Um, I found an online magazine that is willing to publish, like, an op-ed essay thing I wrote. Um, so I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Will you share it with Wait, us? Wait, what? Say that again? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I found... A online magazine that's going to publish something that I wrote. <gasps> yeah, you have to share that with us, please. I will. Oh my goodness, you have to. Yay! <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Yay, anything else? Um, I guess I went on a school trip to Washington, D.C., and we got, like, we got back like a couple days before everything shut down. And so it was really wow. good timing that we got to go. Wow. wow. How was the trip? It was really fun. It was cool. Nice. I love DC. Yay. Okay. Uh, Courtney. So, other than the large amount of homework I've had, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing because that came out last week. So, I've been uh, working on my island. And I've also cool. been finding ways to connect with my friends. So, we did an online D&D session last week, and that was actually really fun because just gave everybody a chance to talk and like let off some steam so we've been playing online games together and just chilling cool nice Uh, it's good to see you too yeah um i'm glad that you all could be here today uh next would be deacon who deacon you deacon (laughs) oh okay okay i didn't hear i didn't hear the d Sorry. <laughs> I heard like Ian. But, um, so. uh, I haven't been doing much. Seconds. Uh, me and my mom have been watching all the Star Wars movies again. And that's been pretty fun. I didn't remember anything about the original ones. And so that was fun. Uh, other than that, I haven't really been doing too much. I've been writing a lot and reading a lot and drawing a lot as well. Even though I'm not like great at drawing. I still enjoy doing it, so I do it every once in a while, and I've been getting to do a lot of that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, really. Nice. Um, Kelly, you're next on my list. Do you want to go now? Um, sure. Um, let's see. I um, started to set up my home office, so I got on my little geeky stuff. <laughs> I tried to have dispensers and... Lots of Princess Leia and some McGonagall and my favorite, Vice Admiral Holdo. Um, and I'm going to geekify it some more. And I was actually, I had to travel to Texas to help my mom with some things. And I was there when the whole world changed. Um, so I stayed a lot longer, which was nice. It was great to be with my mom. Um, and then I decided that I, I had to come home. Um to be with my family here. So I rented a car and traveled home with virtually like almost no human contact, like very little human contact. And 
taking as many precautions as I possibly could. And it was an amazing, beautiful drive. And I got to listen to lots of audiobooks, one Star Trek audiobook, and then Binti by Nnedi Korafor. I finally got to um, listen to that. And so I'm really loving audiobooks right now because um, like different library services are increasing the number that you can check out um, online. And then the finale of Star Trek Picard was amazing. And I've only cried once, um, cried more at Star Trek once. And I won't tell you when that was because it's a major spoiler, but it was incredible. And um, we did an online Doctor Who and philosophy discussion last night, which was super fun. We're gonna be doing fandom Friday discussions, which I hope you'll all be part of. And then my other fandom moment is just being here with you is incredible because, you know, I've been away extra because I was in Texas and I've just really missed you all. And I'm so glad to see you uh, because you just brighten my life more than anything else. And it's wonderful. Yeah. And um, for those of you who are in our, who are in our Harry Potter groups, we're going to try to do online Harry Potter too, just as an announcement. Okay. Um, Bella. So I have a couple. One is that I'm going to be the dungeon master for a couple D&D games coming up. Um, and the other is that I've been getting into two TV shows over like the quarantine almost. Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. So good. It's absolutely beautiful. And all of the stories are mesmerizing and amazing. So I've been watching that and that's been super fun. And also the uh, Ray Bradbury Theater which is based on the Bradbury short stories. And so some of them I've read, some of them I haven't, but that's just been super interesting to watch. That, I, I was actually thinking of watching that because it came up in, on my Amazon Prime or something. Audrey yeah. just said something really tragic as a kind of an anti-fandom moment. So Audrey, can we come back to you at the end? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm grieving. I'm really upset too. Okay. Uh, Louise, Louise. Um, so, I got permission to, instead of playing the flute in my school jazz band, I I can now play the saxophone in the jazz band, which is really fun, because I've never done that before, and, and, um, I've been playing a lot of board games with my family, and making a lot of art, and a very sad thing is that... My favorite show, which is on its sixteenth season, not Supernatural, but it's on it's on its sixteenth season. Um, it the the three last episodes of the sixteenth season had to get canceled. What show oh, is it? Really sad. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. Oh. <laughs> and I'm really sad because I love that show. And we want you to send us pictures or scans or whatever of all your art, and we'd love to read read your writing and all that stuff, all the cool stuff that you're um, creating while you're at home. Yes, please. Um, Malia? Um, I haven't really been doing anything just besides writing and reading. Like, I just started the Throne of Glass series, and I've been writing, like, since the social distancing started, I've written, I think... We were on page 25 of our Google Docs, and now we're on page 90. So we've been just wow. writing, like, nonstop. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, sure. Yeah, awesome. that's it. Like, that's all I've been doing. I think that's great. Yeah, that sounds like a lovely existence right now. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. <laughs> um, next is Mina. Okay, just a sec. I got to get ready. There's a specific reason why I've been off camera for a while. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, it's banana, Mina. <laughs> my room is cold, so I do this often. Okay, so I have three no. <laughs> moments. I recently found my lizard again, and I'm very happy. I found my Yay. rubber lizard. It's my favorite. And also recently, I made a doll dress. Oh, wow. Cool. That's wonderful. And then I also just have this stuffy that I've been... I got what kind of picture here. is that? It's from the Lilo and Stitch movies. Aww. It's I got it from Disneyland. I'm very proud of it. Nice. I, I and, like, I, I'm sorry, go on. 
And also, I am officially starting my very first D and D online D and D campaign. I get to be a druid that controls oh, bugs. I'm a bug druid. A bug druid. Yep. I love that. Oh yeah, yeah. We should play the Last Stand on Zoom or on Google Hangouts. That's yeah, we could that. that would be fun. We should, we should do that. We should do that. Hangout. It's either going to be really fun or it's going to be a if- disaster. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen Roll Twenty, but we could use Roll Twenty to play the last the stand. What? Oh, yeah. my screen. Yeah, that Roll Twenty. Okay. I think. Yeah. Uh, Deacon we'll and talk. I could look into okay. how to. Yeah, yeah well, um, Peter, if you guys can email us, um, we'll work it out that way. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody explained because my um, screen froze for a minute, but The Last Stand is a role playing game that this group of young people, young adults, invented like five years ago, I want to say. It was, at the Mis- it was at MythCon. Yes. In no, or it was at um, our. our uh, real it was at myth. the thing in Niwot. Yeah, our first symp- or our only symphony. Yeah. 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 And we've and we've been playing it for five years and like new people come in and then you know, Courtney and um Leo graduated and so you had to appoint your successors as game masters. So it's very cool. Okay. Uh, oh, Mina says you're, uh, if you're having trouble using Zoom, like we'll talk, we'll communicate with all of you about like what platforms you wanna um, communicate on besides Discord, which we're already doing. Thanks to Peter. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Miriam. To <laughs> Miriam. Okay. So um, during this meeting, I just posted what I drew in the Discord, which is snake inspired things. The snakes are cool. Uh, Thank you. I guess recently I've kind of been doing. Poetry ish. There is more poetry in my notebook than there was before. Um, thankfully, the finale of Steven Universe Future has not been delayed due to coronavirus, so we got to see that. Glorious. Good. Um, I've not really been playing as much D&D as I thought I would be. There's still time. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think that all, and you know, I just want to say again, we'd love, to, we'd love to read your stuff, we'd love to see your art, all of it. If you want to record yourself playing the flute or the saxophone or whatever you play, then that would be good too. Yes. You have a built-in yeah. audience. Anything else, Miriam? That's it. Okay. Uh, Peter. I already went. I guess oh, yeah. I have one more, I guess. Um, no, you don't get another one. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, okay. go, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, um, I started watching uh, Mind Hunter on Netflix. Yes. It's been an experience. Um, I, I've also been reading Stephen King, so I just thought, like, uh, like a thriller binge, I guess, doing this whole thing. So nice. <laughs> nice. Um, I'll let you answer in the chat. Uh, Sawyer, you're next. Uh, I don't really have anything to say. Nothing. You're here. <laughs> That's, uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, Brooks? I'm going to be playing some D&D tonight. Nice. Yeah. I wonder if the DM is letting me play as two characters. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are your two characters? Uh, Eden. Eden, which is a, a circle of the moon druid. And John, which is a cir- circle of the separate druid. Ooh. I, I love druids. I love playing bards and druids. Yeah, we're kind of new. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. I love playing clerics. And, but anyway, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, Xander, yeah, you know, you're next. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, so I've been looking forward to this update for scrap for this game called Scrap Mechanic for like multiple years now. And it's supposed to have come out come out in like three days, but I'm guessing it's going to get delayed. So that's a little frustrating. 
I've been playing a little bit at a, a few video games with my with my friend. Um, and I was thinking thinking about a couple stories from the time I went to World Scout Jamboree. Like I was inside of I was doing some VR stuff and I was playing Beat Saber and like I was just going ham and like throughout the entire time I was going ham at Beat Saber, just everyone else in the tent left except for the staff. So what ended up happening was me just like going crazy as like there was no one else in there. I so, love that story. Yeah. What was the other story? Um I didn't have another story, but let me think of one real quick. Let's see. Okay. Um, oh boy. The toll market? Oh, yeah. At Jamboree, there was this bridge that was, like, a huge bridge. I don't know if I have any pictures of, of it, like, on hand, but it basically had an arch kind of thing where it had the ropes on the side but instead of just having ropes on the side you could actually walk on it and you can go under the bridge and there was like a little down there with picnic tables so a lot of people were trading their patches from scout camps and one day it was raining so i walked underneath the bridge and there was like hundreds of patches just littered the floor down there because people that dropped them through the cracks wow like do you think that's been happening over years? I don't think so, since there was years. there was a thousand, over like forty thousand people or something like that there. Oh, oh! Wow, wow! In the gambling Kansas countries. Yeah. So, there it might have happened. Some of the patches might have been there before, but still, it was really funny. Like I saw some people just down there collecting the patches that people dropped as well, just for their own collection. <laughs> So that's a that's an awesome story. Those yeah, I have great stories about Jamboree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have many fandom moments to come, and so you, we, I would love to hear them. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Audrey, do you want to share your uh, small one? Yeah. What about Sawyer? Uh, Sawyer went, like, didn't have much to say. He said, uh, which is okay. Okay. Audrey, so break my heart all over again. So, oh, I'm grieving because Supernatural is in the smack middle of season 15. And, like, I'm, like, already, like, um, it's, like, already hard to, like, wait a week in between episodes. Especially because they just took, like, a month break. And I was not happy about that month break. I know! But now... They can't, like, edit any more episodes, so they can't, like, have any more episodes, and it's making me sad. Because there's oh, going to no. be, like, because we don't know when Supernatural's going to be back. It's, I'm, yeah, it, I'm devastated. It, I completely am in the same boat as you. It's the last season, it's the 15th and they, season. Like, and they left off on a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Yes. Oh. But we can we can like support each other. <laughs> yes, we're in this together. Oh Hashtag my god! Together. <laughs> Hashtag I SPN family. I feel you, Audrey. I feel you so much. Aww. Because <laughs> currently, I finished the recent season of Miraculous, and they were about to come out with the fifth season, and now they can't. So I'm I'm upset wow. about that. So much is impacted by everything that's going on. But talking to all of you always gives me hope for the future. And, you know, like I said, it just, I can, you know, Robin and I have said so many times we can be having a bad day and we come into a YA meeting and our day is not bad anymore. It's great. And this has been great. And I'm so grateful to you. And we'll talk, um, we'll send out emails. So do pay attention to your emails. Um, and we'll talk on Discord, actually, now that Peter's Discord for us. Um, I'm not sure what you're doing. Can I share my um, We'll talk about um, other ways we can communicate. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't share my phone. Oh, oh Robin? What? Sorry. I just wanted to Oh, my gosh. That's so, okay. so unfair. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, go, Robin. Um, well, I'm still working, like, at home, but when I'm off, I have been playing and I've now finished the Outer Worlds video game. 
Nice. So, that was cool. Peter, I know you played it. But, yeah, um, I know, I know. Outer Worlds is so good. So you beat me. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah, I've been playing it a lot. Um, and my show, my favorite show, The Magicians, is ending, but we it's already been filmed. Yeah. But next week is like the last uh, whatever. Is it the music? So I don't know how I feel about that, but I did get the books now, so I can at least read the books. Oh, we have to talk about the books. Yeah, have I'll let you know them. when I finish. Is the last Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Is the last episode a musical episode? No, they just had a musical episode, and they oh. have more next week. Oh. So. I, I think I'm going to start watching that show. It's I definitely an M-rated it. show. So. Oh, yeah. yeah Which one? Make that point. Yeah, the Magicians. One? It's definitely oh. an M-rated show. Yeah. The, yeah, and the books are, too. Like, I would not recommend yeah. that anyone who is not an adult read those books. There's a um, absolutely. But anyway, okay, so um, is there anything else that we need to add before we're done or we need to talk about? Because we will be communicating with all of you and we want to stay in touch as much as possible. Do remember, we know this is a stressful time and you have anxiety and questions and worry and grief and sadness and confusion and all of those things and that it, all of those things are okay to feel and that Robin and I are here for you um, and that we love hearing from you and your lizard. <laughs> it's like Doctor Who, four things and a lizard. <laughs> so anyway, um, we think you're all amazing and I'm glad that um, Longlot gets to see how amazing you are. So thanks for being willing to be recorded today. And we'll do more of this, um, more of recordings, so that people can, more people can see more of your awesomeness. And um, yeah, until next time, which I hope is sooner than next Saturday, because we have so many things that you can join in on. And thank you so much. <laughs> Are we going to close out with this logo too? <laughs> logo, oh, yeah. yes, definitely. Yes. And you know what? I think Deacon needs to do it. Yeah, Deacon. 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 I actually think that Mina's lizard should do it. Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> dart, dart, dart. <laughs> Being a nerd. Wait, so wait, so Mina. Yeah, we're not yeah, even okay. Yeah. Um, I need it. To... Everybody oh, ready? Lottie's holding yes. up her Lord of the Rings books. <laughs> I'll hold this. Is, is oh, everyone ready? Are you holding a toothbrush? Okay. <laughs> Dig it. I'm gonna count us and then you start, okay? One, okay. one, two, two three. 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 Be